Hello, welcome to our podcast, The Spiritual Hour. My name is Gina. I'm Anna. And today we'll be continuing our conversation about the nervous system because it turns out it's a very broad topic. <laughs> it's, it's very, very broad. So we will are continuing that conversation today. Um, mm-hmm. Doing her sage action. Is it a light? Speaks about yeah. the Hello? Wait, you guys start over. I can't hear you. Now? Okay. Maybe? Hello? 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 Yeah. Okay, that's... Yeah, I saw my little thing. Oh, okay. I don't know if I'm still live or not. We're off to a very promising start today, guys. Okay, let's take two. Try that again. Hello, my name is Gina. <laughs> I'm Anna. And today we are continuing a conversation about the nervous system. And the card I got today was Kindred. And mm. I found that to be very beautiful because we were just talking about that before the podcast, how like interacting with different people can have different differing impact on our nervous systems. Um, and I feel this is speaking about co-regulation and finding people that kind of properly hook up with your unique your unique circuitry. Um, mm-hmm. you talk about how we're all the same and stuff, but yeah, we are kind of, but we're not compatible with everyone. Everyone's not kindred spirit. Um, yeah. So I feel this card is speaking about those connections that are and, you know, knowing yourself so you can attract that into your life. Um, mm-hmm. I love this card. Me really too. Cool. It's a good pull. Mm-hmm. Because not everybody is for you. And that's not to say that you have to surround yourself with people that are only like you. Because that's bad as well. You need some, like, differentiality, you know. But there's a lot of people in a, energetically wise that we're not always going to mesh well with. And I think it's important to know that, like, sometimes... We're not going to be liked by other people, and we're not going to like other people, and that's fine. You just got to take it as it is and keep it stepping, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, what are you drinking today? Today, I'm drinking hibiscus tea with a little honey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. Yeah, I love the um, herbal teas. Mm -hmm. Hibiscus, rose, like... Really soft, dainty teas. So mm-hmm. Yeah, just- this one's really good. I got it's it's for cycle harmony, so it has like hibiscus, um, mugwort, and like some other things that are supposed to be good for like your cycle and like you know that time of the month. So and I like it. It it I'm noticing that I'm less irritable. and I have like less like weird cravings and stuff. So I even drink it. When I'm not on my cycle, I kind of like a uh, supplement with it a little bit, and notice the difference. So Absolutely. very yeah. happy about that. Yeah, that's how you really are supposed to go about those types of things. You're supposed to like take it when there isn't an issue, so yeah. you can use to like flush everything out. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I wonder how my- other cycles play into nervous system. Some people are really. I know myself. I had just like. Because you still remember all of your cycles, even if like you're experiencing one. And I know for myself personally, I have the most negative imprint of what it means to have like a cycle. Um, Horrible first time getting it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, I don't remember being so sick at Definitely, as I got older, I would just get feeling. And so that's definitely imprinted in my mind. But at this point in my journey, due to good eating, exercise, energy work, um, and just overall coming into bodily coherence, I would Mm -hmm. say that I do have some symptoms, but like a walking apart compared to my old symptoms. 
so much so that the second day I can go exercise and not do anything like crazy heavy. I lift weights, but for me to be able to go lift weights on my second day is like a blessing. And even the mm -hmm. first day, I would say it's not terrible, but I wouldn't be be happy go lucky enough <laughs> to go do actual exercise. Let me go for a walk or something. Um, but even that is still a blessing because I would not be completely bedridden for the whole day because <laughs> my mom wouldn't really allow me to, unfortunately. But I would say I get, would get really sick. And so, like, I just would feel nauseous. And, like, the imprint is not a good one. So it's cool to have a new scope of seeing things by. Yeah, I definitely agree. Because I, like, I guess my experiences weren't, I don't know. I feel like they were pretty bad, like, when I first started as well. And, like, there's always, like, a lot of, like, stress around it, especially if, like, you're not really prepared or, like, educated enough, then, like, when you first get it, it can be. It's, like, and I feel we kind of know, mm -hmm. but, like, we still need someone to tell us, basically. Yeah. And then when we're not told, we can, like, go into, like, <laughs> like things just get a little bit complicated, like, when we're not told, you know, and then, like, we're, like, stressed out and, like, why is this happening? And then, like, am I dying? You know? So, like, that's, like, the first thing that, like, I feel like women kind of, like, go through, especially if, like, there's not a lot of education on it. And then that puts, like, crazy amounts of stress on your body, which, especially at that young age, when you're already having, like, hormonal stress and, like, hormonal changes. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, having your period be regulated will definitely not tax your nervous system as much because everything goes hand in hand and everything's connected. So mm -hmm. if you can kind of like mitigate some of those like crazy symptoms and like the Simpson the Sim Simpsons <laughs> and like the symptoms that are like common but still not necessarily okay for us to be having. Like, we should not be having, you know, severe headaches and migraines. You know, apparently cramps are not normal either. And, like, that's all due to, like, diet and, like, lack of exercise as well. Like, it's it's crazy. There's So that can be another topic <laughs> on its own. Yeah, because I remember, I think we, I don't know what podcast this was, but I remember thinking, oh, it must have been so much harder having periods back in the day, back in the day. But then you were saying, well, they probably had a more intimate relationship with their body to the sense that they were eating differently and like they probably just were more in tune with it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that that's what I assume, yeah. you know, just because like everything was a lot more close knit and like, you know, um, more connected with themselves and like the earth and like the other women around them so they were able to like you know be together psycho i could not imagine being like it's already hard enough like cycling up with like women that you start to work with i couldn't imagine like how many women in in a tribe like like all of like the Wait, say especially, it again. Especially in the wartime, when they were all like doing all like the work when the men were away, and so the woman stepped up and did everything. Mm -hmm. And there was because I feel that even in literature, uh, cycles are never addressed with women. And we have a female main character, and she's like, I don't know, obviously post that, so she has it. And then like, well, where is it? Like, where is it in the story? And it's just interesting to me how like. It's a, a detail that we go through, but it's always left out in media. It's always left out. Like, especially in, like, The Walking Dead. Like, um, I don't think they ever really explain, or not even just explain, just, like, show. Like, they, they always show us, like, oh, they need to go grab medicine, you know, or, like, one of the characters, they had a baby, so they need to, like, find formula or whatever, but I'm like, what are you doing for your period? Like, I'm confused. Oh, Why is that? And then you can't shower, and I'm just like, what? What? I don't know. And like, but no, that's the birth, you like bleed for like X amount of time too. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it's not just one and done, you know, you have a while until like things are copacetic down there. So, I'm like, 
Why doesn't that get explained? Where's all um, of that detail? That's so important. Right? But then half the time, like, they never show them with, like, messed up, like, teeth or anything. There's no, like, yellowing of their teeth either. So I'm just like, little things like that I also, like, <laughs> notice. And I'm just like, I don't believe it. Yeah, they're dirty, but, like, their teeth still look, you know, like they just brushed. You know, like, I can tell that she's wearing makeup under that fake dirt. Like, Oh, no. Cute little okay. eye shadow in the mask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's super realistic. I'm just like, oh my god. Uh, All right, but yeah, that many. But, things. <laughs> yeah, I know. We You're haven't welcome. even actually started just yet. <laughs> um, but yes, today we are continuing on with our previous topic of the nervous system. Um, this one. I want to focus a little bit more on massage and how that relates to the nervous system as well as like, I think I briefly touched on aromatherapy last time as well. Um, and then just going to mention some other things that I have forgotten in the last one, but it's just, I don't, well, I guess I should like introduce myself then. I am a massage therapist. So that is what I do by trade. I've been a massage therapist for about two years now. Um, two, yeah, like two and some change. Um, and there are a lot of like different benefits to massages. Not only the like physical aspect of it. Like if you come in with an injury or if you come in, you know, with just some like aches and pains and like some tension that you want to alleviate. That's all great physically, but like there's a lot more happening underneath like your skin and um that basically can improve your mood you know it can reduce your stress so there's a lot of things like cellularly i always have trouble saying that so i have to say it so cellularly that happens when you get a massage so we're going to be talking about the benefits as they relate to uh different hormones that are like secreted um, and as they relate to like your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous system. So with that being said, what is the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system? Yes. So the parasympathetic, um, nervous system is what controls the body's ability to relax. Um, and it's sometimes called the rest and digest state. The sympathetic nervous system controls our fight or flight response. So that's going to, um, anytime that we're stressed or anytime that we're in a situation that heightens like our senses and that like we're feeling that like we're in danger, whether it's like physical danger or even just speaking in front of like other people. So like public speaking, or if like someone cuts you off in, in traffic, all that, um, can what is it what's the word i'm looking for all that can add to or contribute to the rise in like your stress levels and activate your sympathetic nervous system so with massage really yeah. quickly i just had a thought in my head i'm like hmm because everyone's like it was love at first sight but i'm like is that person just triggering your nervous system <laughs> is they, are they just triggering with that rest or the fight or flight aspect you know I don't know. I mean, it's possible because there is uh, one thing that I put in the note. Where is it? Um, um, so there is a hormone that's released when you get a massage and it's called oxytocin. And that's like the happy hormone. And there's two other hormones that get released, but that's like the main one. The other two are dopamine and serotonin. Um. And so it's possible that, like, if you meet someone and they, like, graze your shoulder or your arm or something, it activates and it can also reduce your um, heartbeat. And what's the other thing? Uh, slows down your heartbeat and calms your nervous system. So those are all the things that, like, just human touch and possibly even just like human interaction, if you're talking to someone that like, again, is enjoyable and like energetically like compatible with you, can also potentially um, have, an, a, have a positive effect on your nervous system. Um, so, 
So, yeah. The other um, hormones that get released in addition to dopamine and serotonin are endorphins, which are the body's like natural pain relievers. So it's produced by the body to reduce pain and give an overall sense of well-being. So massage creates, massage increases um, these available levels of these natural chemicals and can promote healing and reduce swelling and speed up recovery. Um, cortisol is the hormone that's released when you're in that fight or flight state. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. And usually, like, if you have, like, anxiety or depression, like, that will tend to be a little bit higher than the other um, hormones in your body because, yeah, because for some reason, like, that's, that hormone is the one that, like, gets things done in the time of need, but when there isn't a time for it, it can kind of like run rampant. So that's why like massage or, you know, breathing techniques or, you know, aromatherapy can be beneficial to kind of like uh, keep that, keep that, um, reduce that hormone and then kind of like keep it at bay and give you like a sense of like overall ease and like sometimes pleasure too, like at the end of a massage, not in a weird way, but like it gives you like a certain sense of like euphoria afterwards. Yeah. I did um, one time and like I was going through something in my lower back and like that area was just so sensitive and I was on like, Oh, it was so good. Mm -hmm. so not to mention that, like, the body remembers everything. So if you got scared in the second grade or whatever, your body <laughs> holds on to that emotion. So not only do we have, like, a physical aspect of, um, like, a physical aspect of, like, your body carrying that tension, there's also the emotional aspect as well. So you can physically feel that you have knots in your shoulders, you know? That could be from constant work on a computer. That could be because, like, you might be in a situation where you're not fully comfortable, so your shoulders are to your ear, you know? Or it could just be because of, like, emotional stress. You know, you're in a relationship with someone and they're not the best. You know, you don't have the best relationship with a family member or like you don't have the best relationship with someone at your job or everyone at your job, you know, and that we hold it all in. We absorb it constantly. So we need avenues um, to expel it and like get rid of it and like reduce it. So massage is one of, to me, I would say the best way to reduce those symptoms and like kind of like come back to center and be a little bit more balanced. And then like the second way would definitely be aromatherapy, using that hand in hand and then supplementing with like meditation and like breath work, you know, and trying to like remind your body to relax because our body is smart and adaptable. It wants to adapt, but unfortunately it will adapt to the pain, you know, either physically or emotionally that we're in. So whatever state we're in, the body is constantly trying to figure out, like, hey, how can I make myself better? You know, so it's going to, like, dip, dodge, weave, and, like, put two things together, make them connect just to, like, keep ourselves running and, like, keep ourselves in, like, you know, a fixed state. But they can't do that forever. So eventually, like, you know, these symptoms can lead to, like, depression. They can lead to anxiety. You know, we can get, um, like, it could create, like, brain fog, you know, trying to, like, think of a word, you know, trying to recall a memory or something. All these go hand in hand and then can, you know, take a toll in your body and, like, its basic functions. Because that's what, as we learned in the last episode, the nervous system is, like, a part of and what it oversees. You know, it oversees feelings how you react to things you know um how you how you take in information remembering things your recall and all that stuff you know so it's just it's really interesting and i can keep talking and talking about this but if you have any questions or anything that or anything you want to say to further this along go right ahead <laughs>
<clears throat> yeah, I was also thinking about the benefits of energy <clears throat> of energy healing on the nervous system as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel particularly with the with energy healing, you have to really like put the intent for the session to be with the nervous system versus working on anything else. Because I found, especially in my own practice, like it's beautiful to work with chakras, do breath work, meditate, etc. Um, but I find that a more direct approach is needed for when we are addressing the physical body. Because mm -hmm. yes, it's, it's all connected, but there's also like subtle separation as well. And so we have to kind of like bridge that gap a little bit. And so again, I do see energy healing being super impactful. Of course, I don't know what science there is around it, but I could speak from my own experiences and I would have to look up and see if there are any studies on it. And I'm pretty sure Maybe we're just beginning to do that. Um, but yeah, I think having a focused intent to work with the nervous system makes the energy healing even more potent and more long lasting as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. I definitely agree. Just because I think anything that we do with intention is always the way to go. Like our intention should be pure. We should be, you know, having like a focus of what we're trying to accomplish day to day, you know, just in general. And then also just for our healing, because our minds are so powerful and our imagination is so powerful. And because we are energy, we can create. And then that ripples and then that, um, that ripples. And then it, you know, manifests itself in like our spiritual world. So it makes it more tangible. So because we are energy and we have that power that we can like manifest and like bring things to our physical world. We should always be doing things with intent and like with a purpose. It shouldn't just be because, you know, I'm like, you can just get a massage. Yes, you can just do this. But what's your goal? What do you want out of it? You know, and I feel like that's something that even just day to day in our lives, we tend to forget about um, just being intentional with what we're trying to do even just like making dinner you know just trying to like get to point a to point b you know while we're driving what's our goal while we're driving your goal should be you know getting from where you are to where you're trying to go safely you know and like well what does that look like arriving to your destination safely you know but and then also physically how are you going to do that Use your blinker, you know, don't just merge over, you know, uh, um, avoid going over the speed limit, you know, don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like people here really hate using their blinkers. And also I was thinking how driving could really negatively impact the nervous system for some people. Yeah. Just from the exhaust alone, you know, the chemicals that we're breathing in, the fact that we're sitting and wasting our time in just idly, you know, for like however long your commute is, if it's hot, you know, if you just got out of work and you're hungry, oh, you know? You know one thing, driving mm -hmm. dehydrated is something many people do. And I've had mm -hmm. to make it a really big effort to like drink a lot of water when I'm driving. And I know that this may seem like so stupid, but I, I've noticed differences but not anything crazy, you know, but that's also one thing I've been really, f it may seem, you know, dumb, but people tend to drive dehydrated and that definitely impacts your mood and stuff. And just how, how like people's driving can trigger that like fight or flight within you as well when you're driving. Mm -hmm. I want to <laughs> breathe, you know, just breathe. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah. Um, definitely how the dehydration and just how it can also trigger that fight or flight sometimes. No, yeah. So that's why when you need a driver, you're going to be in that rest and digest phase. You're going to be in that. <laughs> oh, not a driver even, just like an Uber. I find myself to be so much more calmer than when I'm personally driving. Um, and like, even if I'm, we're going slow or like if we're in like behind a truck or something, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm not driving. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I actually prefer to be, even though I like driving and I prefer to be driving because like I know that I tend to be a pretty safe driver, 
I like when someone else drives too, definitely. It's more <laughs> for me. I think this that's the part of you that like is trying to relinquish control a little bit. It's like, ah, this is nice. I can get used to this. I like this. <laughs> it, it's not but, anyone can have a yeah. <laughs> I know, honestly. Yeah, you don't have to pay out the ass. Well, sometimes. Because Uber is going to be a little bit expensive. Today, mine was pretty cheap for a Saturday. I was like, okay, like, this is nice. Like, it was probably about, like, a three and a half, four dollar, like, difference almost. And I was like, dang, okay, like, saving money over here. Like, that's kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, going back to what you said, driving dehydrated, that makes a lot of sense. Because I feel like, I don't know if I saw something or, like, read something relatively recently maybe like the last couple of months where someone said that like they try not to drive like hungry because they've noticed that like when they're hungry they're more aggro yeah and yeah which makes sense because there's a thing called hangry so it's like yeah if you're just you know already hangry and then you add driving or you know and then like also your focus is lower when you're hungry or like when you're dehydrated you know because your body is like pulling resources to like make yourself like okay and like be able to function so it's just like you have brain fog you know you're irritable you know and then don't let it be hot too dehydrated it's hot and you're hungry recipe for freaking disaster are you kidding um, me yeah really really yeah especially when driving because I really think, honestly, driving is just excess stress. Because we were talking mm -hmm. about it and just, like, thinking about how stressed I get sometimes about it. And not in, like, this solely negative way, but just to think about... Or I live in a very touristy area, for example. So whenever I'm downtown, and not often, not often. But when I am, I'm thinking, okay, driving for myself, mm -hmm. driving for people around me, in these... Mm -hmm. Pedestrians, I'm driving for them too because literally, I just assume everyone's dumb. And I know that may just seem rude. No, I just assume you have to. You have like, to. People will just pop out in front of you, and I'm just like, you know what? This is a moving car that could hit you. Mm -hmm. but, okay. So yeah, it's definitely very stressful for me sometimes. Yeah. So making sure you're fed, you're hydrated, and that you just overall have a destination in mind. I think can help as well. And you said something else. I don't know what that one was, but yes. It's all important because I really mm -hmm. feel that driving can put you in this easily excess stressful state, activating that fight or flight energy within you. And driving is just not good. And I really, this must be what road rage is, honestly, that fight or flight instinct within us. Because mm -hmm. some people get so angry. I remember I was driving back from Florida and I, I don't know what was happening because at that time, like, I think after like five hours, five and a half, I'm just like, I'm just doing this because I have to, you know? I don't like stopping. Um, But I was driving and this one guy was like saying something to me. I'm like, I was like, this is just so extra. Like I started to engage but I'm like, wait, this is just so extra. Like there's no, there's no reason to be so upset, you know? And so mm -hmm. I was like, send you on your way, send me a little blessing, whatever. But yeah, that fight or flight energy is definitely road rage for many people. And it oh, yeah. could be time to be hungry, being dehydrated, but I think driving definitely puts us in this excess state of like being super heightened and you have to be, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. Because like, I feel like we're always pretty, I feel like for the most part, people are always pretty stressed out because not only with driving, but like the fact that like they have to drive to work and like it's like an hour. So that means that they have to wake up earlier. So that means that like, you know, the night before they have to go sleep earlier. But if they didn't go to sleep earlier, and then, you know, if they have kids or they have, you know, a spouse or they're trying to, like, <laughs> have, like, a work-life balance. So they went out, you know, and they, they had fun. And then they're like, I'm going to regret that in the morning because I have to wake up at 5 and then make their commute. And then, like, if they ate. They probably ate something that wasn't great, you they know. Maybe it was, yeah. They had they had coffee instead of eating, and my God, I don't understand how people can drink coffee on an empty stomach. Because also, how I grew up, you drink coffee with something. You don't just drink coffee by itself. Like my grandmother, like 
made coffee, but we had, you know, maybe like a donut, which probably isn't also the best, but whatever. At least there's something in your system. But like, or like she would make a bagel or like grits, you know, you know, something small and then coffee. And then she would like actually cook breakfast and then she would have like another cup of coffee. But like, I don't remember her ever drinking coffee on an empty stomach. I think that's like, you're just asking for problems. Like, honestly, all that caffeine, there's nothing to absorb it. Hit your system like this. And people wonder why they're extra stressed. They wonder why they have anxiety. I'm like, it's not really anxiety. You're just wired on freaking coffee, like caffeine and energy drinks. Yeah, people who drink energy drinks, I'm concerned for them, honestly. Yeah. And people who drink excess amounts of coffee. I know that, I guess it really depends on your system, but for me personally, I cannot digest it. I don't know why I had it. Well, I can have it like once every like three months, maybe, mm -hmm. <laughs> or something. Like it has to be super like spread out. I remember I had coffee one day. I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. So I went back and got another one. I haven't had coffee since, okay? I'm like, <laughs> no. no, no, no. So yeah, and I don't even, I don't think at that point I would have even had an empty stomach because I know for me personally, I'm even particular about how I eat my food. Like, so in what order? So I do protein first and then I try to do carbs later. Or what I do is I combine the protein, like a um, kind of 50-50 ratio, but more protein than the, than the carb and I eat together. So normally... I do like rice and peas and um, meat. So I always, I, I just eat my food in a very, very, very particular way. Okay. Like almost OCD, but I found that it really helps for me personally and digestion and whatnot. So if it works, it works. Um, but yeah, people who drink coffee on empty stomach, I'm like, wow, you really, I want to say you really hate yourself, but that may be kind of extreme, but like, that's just for me, it's, I'll say it. It's very intense. Cause I just can't imagine. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Like, honestly, it, it's the fact that, like, we're so disconnected from our bodies that you think that that's a good idea. Like, and instead of giving your body what it needs, you're giving yourself what it wants. You're giving yourself what you want. And then you wonder why you always have a headache or you wonder why you're irritable. I'm just like, this is the other thing that I wanted to talk about as well. Like, massage is great. Aromatherapy is great. Doing energy work is wonderful. You know, doing your meditation and, like, breathing techniques. You know, going for walks. Great. All that does not freaking matter if you're going to put shit in your system still. Yes, yes, yes. Right? I was thinking, like, the nervous system first is regulated by what you eat, essentially. Mm -hmm. Really essentially. And so, yes, I'm like, oh. Because I was literally thinking, I'm like, okay, we're saying like everything's so expensive and stuff, you know? And then there's the people who eat out to like the faster restaurants like twice a week or once a day or something. And I'm like, you know, and I know people do it because these restaurants would not be open if no one were actually going to them. And I'm just like, this is probably why everyone's just so dysregulated because we eat shit. And that is like the first thing to like regulate yourself and maybe that's also why i've seen so many positive changes is when i started to clean up my diet everything just kind of became yeah. me, you know and so mm -hmm. yeah, the energy work is great because i would do energy work i don't think i was certified to do it on my own but i did some reiki sessions when i was living back home and even those ones they were nice and i think i was eating kind of better too we got like hello fresh then so i wasn't mm. eating like crap but i also go to wendy's I would still like go out to eat and stuff. And I'm not saying every once in a while, but I know for me personally, these things are just, I can't incorporate them back into my diet on any level because my system is just not. Because mm -hmm. once you've like cleansed yourself of that, you know, like you started to eat a little, and like I'm not even saying that you have to eat super clean. I'm not saying that because I even think like that's extreme because I like my sugar and I'm just like, I'm, I can't, I love my yeah. sugar. Love like my I have sugar. a friend and like she, she doesn't really crave sugar, but like every once in a while, like she will, she'll like want like chocolate on her period and then she'll get like super dark chocolate, bitter with like barely any sugar and like, 
that's wild. Good for you. I wish I could do that, but I'm just like, oh, I can't. Mm. Yeah, like it, to me, it just tastes so gross. So good. Yeah. I hate, I I hate like dark chocolate. Is better, but I tend with dark chocolate, the less sugar is better for me. And especially when you're pairing it with something else. Um, it just tastes like dirt to me and not in a good way because <laughs> it all tastes like dirt. You know, some like really herbaceous teas will taste like earth, you know, but I, I can't get with dark chocolate. It's just, it's not my jam. Mm. I, I just can't do it. But anywho, back to what I was saying. Uh, Go I was ahead. Because you said some, some things taste like dirt. I was thinking yeah. teas would be really good for nervous system regulation too. I don't know how much. Oh, yeah. Fun find that but i know for me i've been picking dandelions recently mm -hmm. just to make sure that there are no pesticides in the area yeah be super safe because it's honestly disgusting to, pick, to spray pesticides i find at this point um but yeah they're they're just the dandelion tea is just so grounding and so mm -hmm. i know it's really with the nervous system because it is something you ingest um yeah, yeah back to what you were saying no well. yeah exactly <laughs> I've been on a I've always liked tea I like tea and coffee I grew up drinking coffee so like coffee has a special place in my heart but I'm just not like fanatical about it so like I switched to tea like predominantly probably like early 20s like 22 Wow. and then like I stopped drinking coffee like almost religiously I'm just like I'm good and I think it was because I just got burnt out by drinking coffee. I've literally been drinking coffee since I was like six, <laughs> which is not good. But my nano was from the South. So that's what they did. And so I'm like, I want some coffee. So like, she would give she me like, my own cup. Huh? She was from where? Um, from the South. She was from Alabama. Oh. So I'm like, that's all, you know, coffee was a mainstay for them. So like, she would make me my little breakfast, whatever I wanted. And I would have my little cup of coffee with her. You know, and so it's great. So I've been drinking it for like a while, but then I was just like, I don't know. As I got older, I was just kind of like, I don't really need this. So I just stopped. And like, that's usually kind of like my personality with stuff. I'm just like, eh, I'm over it. I'm good. Like I can go not recently. Cause I've been like craving like sweets a lot lately, but usually I can go like a long period of time with that, like, really wanting something or being like oh well like i could get it or no, i'm good you know but anywho the teas that i've been doing lately has even like increased that for me so now like these cravings that i've been like having have definitely subsided and like you were saying i don't know what the um like science behind uh herbs and like teas are but my thing is, if God gave it to us, I don't see why it wouldn't be good for us, essentially. You know? I really um, herbal medicine. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not, not for that specific point, but essentially it is, you know, because it is regulating something inside of you, so it is a medicine, obviously. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm just like, and then also, like, my... <laughs> We don't really know what we are, like, racially, ethically, 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 that's not right, ethnically, there we go, goodness gracious, but I remember my Nana, like, she would have, like, um, Native American, like, leanings, because, like, her great grandmother or something was, like, part Cherokee or something, so, like, there are some, like, customs that had got gotten like handed down a little bit definitely a little bit you know washed away and like diluted in some things but i remember her just being like a huge proponent for like plant medicine you know of course like we had like tylenol and stuff like that or whatever but like if something ailed you she would whip up you know something with like i don't even know what like a tea tincture thing and then have us, some of them would be like to inhale. Some of them would be for us to actually drink. Um, she was really big on like, like bone broth. So when like bone broth became like a huge thing, I'm just like, 
we've already been doing that. Like, we know of the benefits of, like, bone broth. Like, yeah. But I guess some people didn't know. It's just, it's just so, like, bland. Like, ugh. Yeah. But she would always, I don't know, it was delicious the way she made it. I think because, like, she would do, like, different meats together. Like, like different, like, parts of it. So it would be, like, mostly, like, oxtails. Like, she would, like, take off the meat and then we'd have oxtails. And, like, she would boil the bones and stuff. And then it will be, like, other parts of it as, like, of the animal as well. I don't know. But it was delicious. And then, like, now you can... Just like pretty much flavor it. Um, she's your grandmother, right? Mm-hmm. It's my nana. Nana, yeah, just, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, oh Which God. is like how I'm trying to be. I'm trying to like get my recipes together now. So when I have kids and like they grow up, they're like, "Oh, let's go to Nana's for whatever." And just like, "Yeah, I got you. I got you." But yeah, I've been doing a lot of teas recently. And I've noticed, even just for myself and, like, the regulation of, like, my nervous system has honestly been amazing. Because not only is it, this is another thing that bothers me, is, like, when people say that, like, they don't drink water because of the taste. And I'm just like, are you fine? But whatever. And then I'm just like, okay, (laughs) fine. But, you know, you could drink tea. And tea is delicious. It's literally just like water with herbs in it, you know? No, exactly. Yeah, much. Or even like yeah. that, we have new stuff. We have like the electrolyte water. And you just have to be careful. I use Element. I like it's like so so because they use um stevia, I believe. Mm-hmm. And I, I would rather stevia. I would rather like a cane sugar personally. Um just because it's I don't need like the plant crap. I just I mean, you know, I think stevia is, like, made from a, a plant or something. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know why. It just makes me feel, like, slightly irritated when I drink it. Um, yeah, I I don't drink anything with stevia in it for that exact reason. I don't know what it is. I get, like, <laughs> irritable afterwards. Okay. Like, it's really weird. Yeah. And so, Maybe we just regular, weren't made to drink it. Yeah, because when I do regular sugar, I'm fine. And I, I don't have... I mean, I've been incorporating it more but i would say that it's always the cane stuff and it's always like mm-hmm. i try to get the good stuff basically um not mm-hmm. all the heavily processed and yeah. i feel like cv technically is processed but anyways element um if you don't like the taste of water, i mean that's just bizarre to me but okay i just think it's weird i'm just like okay then drink tea or squeeze a lemon into it like why are you being weird but and i'm just like sugar, you know yeah, like, or like honey, honey. Oh. you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. honey's perfect, or even like allulose is a good like alternative to like sugar, and like I would rather have allulose than stevia because allulose doesn't make me feel weird afterwards. Like I actually mm-hmm. kind of like it, and also it's not it doesn't give you that like sickly sweet taste either, which I think is great. And I um, stevia has a certain like coating. That it gives my tongue or something. Yeah, like that it makes yeah. it feel funny. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I don't like the company element, but I'm like, I wish they would have like option to where oh, this one has regular cane sugar, it's only like twenty calories, mm-hmm. and that has the stevia in it. So we'll see. Hopefully they expand. I think that's the thing is that like most of the time when like new things come out or if they get like revitalized it's because of like a trend and i'm not saying that like health should not be trendy. Yeah, should it yeah it, it shouldn't be trendy to like be healthy like you should be doing this like you know fairly frequently especially if you want like actual progress and like actual results then like you kind of have to do it a little bit more kind of like you know you want to get multiple mm-hmm. massages you know, you're wanting to, like, go, like, once a month. Or, like, even if you can't go once a month, once every other month, something. Because, like, like, it really does make a difference for your body. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, just incorporating things, in, like, for your system that are going to, like, benefit it. The first one, get over the weirdness of, like, oh, water doesn't have a flavor and I don't like it. I'm just, like, just make tea or or, like... 
put like fruit in it like do like an infused water but it's weird because like people will do um like what was that crap that came out like a few years ago uh mio mio oh, it was a, yeah like the there was like a triangular mm -hmm. thing like this and you like squirt it it's basically like kool-aid without the sugar but like you just and it's so good that it coating or like that weird yeah like, and it's freaking disgusting and i'm just like wait so that tastes better to you than just plain old water your taste buds are like effed man like i wonder so how our, our nervous system relates to our taste buds and like the, the foods that we prefer I think it definitely has a huge part of it yeah. because I've had friends that have recommended restaurants to me and I've noticed that if they're in a certain mood, i.e. not necessarily a positive mood and they're a little bit stressed or they're irritable or they're frustrated, and they suggested a restaurant and they go and then they're like, oh yeah, it was great. I had this or whatever. And then like, it's been kind of like an ongoing thing where they've gone multiple times and then they tell me about it. And then I go, I'm just like, this is fucking disgusting. <laughs> you know, just like, it's, so, it's so weird you say that. Cause I'm thinking about a time where I was with this, I was on a date or something. Didn't go anywhere, but I was on the date. And we went to this restaurant, and I'm like, oh, my God, this food is actually pretty good. And then I go there by myself, and it was just disgusting. And I'm like, what? So, like, it's it's funny. It's not the same thing, per se, but it's a similar concept of, like, there being a suggestion, and then, like, you doing it, and you're like, what? And it's, like, maybe fine one time, and then you go back, and it's like, what? What is this? <laughs> It has to be something with our nervous system, yeah, and maybe even the way we we, we are relating to that person, and like mm -hmm. how, like either like or dislike that food based on maybe the mood they're in or something. Yeah, um, this is a whole like area of science that we've uncovered. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever thought about this before. Right? Um, I don't know. Food. I just feel like everything's connected. So, like, to me, that makes perfect sense to be like, if your nerves are shot, then I'm like, how can you adequately that. tell that a meal is good? Yeah, and it's going to impact your food choices. So maybe that's mm -hmm. why, because we live in this, like, hustle, 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 like, get shit done, be productive, like, this overly stressed society and so maybe that's why people tend to reach for that nasty Wendy's or McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And not, yeah. I'm not speaking these restaurants, by the way, but I just feel that they don't offer any healthy options. From mm -hmm. And even their salad, especially for McDonald's, is just like freaking candy. Yeah. And just like, it's like, but maybe it's they're picking that because their taste buds are, are messed up. And it's also really for me personally because like I just made a hundred and like eighty degree change in the way I ate in a pretty like short amount of time. It's funny how your taste buds adapt to the new food. And so it tastes like fresh veggies and like yeah. I remember being unable to eat cucumbers straight, but like give me a freaking cucumber. It's so good. Yeah. Oh my God. Like it cleanses your palate and it gets rid of all that like you know, cake on like crap you've been eating for like X amount of years and your body's like, finally, I've been yeah. waiting for this. It tastes great. And now I want more, you yeah. know, like Versus the nasty McDonald's, which sometimes actually I still do crave McDonald's, but I'm not stupid enough to give it to myself. <laughs> I cook first. I don't know how my body would react to it. Probably very poorly. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point in my fitness journey or health journey, I can't even eat fries from Chick Fil A anymore. I'm like, wow. I That's really interesting. To I me hate Chick Fil A. I consider that to be like, okay, if I can't have anything else, I know I can have Chick Fil A. But I can't have their grilled shit anymore. I can't have their none of their fried stuff, obviously. And now their fries are like off the table for me too. I'm like, wow, wow. I hate really Chick Fil A. I don't know why people like it. To be honest, I don't know what I had never understood like the hype about so it. Nice and like the food, the sauces are so good. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They're yeah, free, but they're mm -mm. so big still. I'm like, why <laughs> so much soy and stuff? Yeah, right. I know. Which is like, oh, that's another thing. 
But like I, I like joy impacts our nervous system. I have all these questions. Oh my God. Yeah, especially, no, because that's a good point, because there are foods, excuse me, there are foods that, like, excuse me, goodness, that, like, we, like, not everyone can eat, you know, like, dependent upon where you're from geographically, highly dictates like what is tolerable or palpable for your body you know like just because we live in this freaking science society doesn't mean that you know what we are attracted to here in america is good for us too mm -hmm. a lot exactly of people, they live more like they definitely have the um quote unquote capitalism i'm not going to blame on capitalism because i feel that it's how we apply it versus the actual system itself mm -hmm. But, you know, countries like Japan and like Italy, they still have their own staple foods with the, uh, quote, capitalism food mixed in. And even there, I'm pretty sure that their, like, ingredient lists are different because... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely. Even in the UK, like, there's so much stuff that their government literally does not allow that our government allows like it's crazy the amount of like stuff that our government allows for to be in our food overly processed and like all these chemicals not only what goes into the food but how it's made like is freaking ridiculous but over there like uh, my office manager at my job is originally from the uk and she moved here like six years ago she said and mm -hmm. She was saying that, like, the food here is completely different than the food over there, especially the fast food, like, which I've heard a lot, where, like, fast food in France, fast food in the UK and London, you know, it's completely different. Like, McDonald's over there tastes fresh. It's, like, restaurant-quality, like, food, while over here, it's clearly over overly processed, freaking mystery meat. Don't know if that's actual chicken or not. You know, the fries well, yes, they're are freaking real. Chicken nuggets, man. They're freaking I always nuggets. hated McDonald's chicken nuggets. Like, like I must. never really liked McDonald's anyway as a kid. If I was to get something, it was definitely their their ham, their cheeseburgers. Double but them cheeseburger. chicken nuggets always bleh. I don't know. It just tasted so gross to me. Yeah, we went there like every weekend sometimes. And that's not good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. thing I feel like that we went to a lot was Popeyes. Um, we yeah, you know, black people and chicken. Which I'm not complaining uh, about because I it. freaking <laughs> love chicken. I love po I love Popeyes. <laughs> like oh we so a, good. We have one here um that's pretty new. I'm like, oh we have a Popeyes now. Well, I, don't know. I wouldn't go now because I don't know what they're putting in the chicken. Because and even here, even even how the food has changed over the years here and how our I'm not that old. Changed. Like I'm only 30. And not, by the way. Yeah. I don't want to say how old I am for them. A young <laughs> little okay. And like, I've noticed like well I don't I wouldn't say I've noticed how the fast food has changed. Um but I would say I noticed how certain ingredients have changed. Like for example I was never super like sensitive to gluten and like i could just have more variety in my diet but at this point like if i don't have like the same meal every day or like the, a variation of that meal my stomach is like you don't eat this okay like, yeah it's it's honestly like kind of annoying at this point because like i'm used to because it's hard to like find things that'll be good for you without it being the same thing and i'm just like mm -hmm. I'm you know I what it is? I'm only being so sensitive, but also I know that the ingredients have changed. And this has been yeah. not confirmed, but I know our wheat has changed in particular. And that's why oh, some yeah. people are gluten intolerant at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I saw a thing that said that like the wheat that we have now isn't the same strain that we had years ago. And it's basically been like um, genetically modified so much and also genetically modified doesn't necessarily always mean like they put in something into that to like make it different mm -hmm. it's also just like the crossbreeding of it and then them like 
physically taking a different strain of like a wheat and mixing it with some with another strain of wheat and it's like the same strain so it doesn't necessarily always mean it's like an outside source either just to differentiate the difference between like gmo um but with that being said it is definitely different and also i feel like the process of which our food is made is different and i think that's probably what contributes more to the fact that like people notice that they can eat less and less of something or somehow all of a sudden become allergic to strawberries that was a weird freaking like three months of my life i don't know why that was a thing i'm assuming and that it has to be like whatever pesticides was being used and then like to a point where like now i can literally only really get my strawberries from like either sprouts or trader joe's or a farmer's market like i can't really do the ones at ralph's like they're okay but also like driscoll as a company isn't that great anyway so like that's fine that i'm not really buying them but like, it's just interesting that, like, I don't have food allergies. I can literally eat whatever I want. But, like, strawberries. Somehow, for a weird, you know, moment in time, I was allergic to. Like, has to be what they're putting on top of it. You know, maybe it was next to something. I don't know. But definitely the process of our foods is definitely different. And then just like the intention behind it is also different because like now it's just, yeah, it's all money based. You know, the smaller farms are being bought out by larger, larger corporate farms. And like, and, honestly, then, and it's not even that they're being bought out because they want to. A lot of them are being forced to sell. Forced to sell. They saturate mm -hmm. the market with the crap. And yep. Why did it do that? Okay. So on my laptop when it was like went black. I'm like, that's just so weird. It did that last time too. But anyways, mm -hmm. the market with crap. And then that's what people buy because we're kind of like not on there sometimes. <laughs> and then they're forced to sell because no one's buying their like more small local stuff. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which is why you're seeing like a resurgence of like local and like sustainable, you know, uh, technologies and like practices, which is great. But now even that is expensive. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. uh, it's like a, a catch 22. Like, what do you do? Do you go for the cheaper stuff? Or like, do you shell out a million dollars, you know, just to go to the farmer's market, you know? Yeah, and uh, this is like a, so a total like aside not related but there's totally a monopoly on the chicken industry and for me that's quite disturbing because i we, we learned about how monopolies aren't sustainable because it's just not sustainable mm -hmm. and, and then so, all the here we are farmers. yep in 2020 and then for a while didn't we have like a chicken shortage it was it was a very small time in like also, it was during the pandemic, but I swear, I remember seeing, like, a few TikTok videos, a few Instagram videos of, like, local farmers who were saying that there was, like, a shortage of, like, chickens and also, big, um, and also, like, the eggs because, like, well, you can have eggs without the chickens, but they were saying, like, they just, they were, like, dying from, like, uh like disease so like they didn't have any for like a while so i don't know if that's still a thing or what but like mm -hmm. it just makes you wonder because i'm like wait there's a chicken shortage but all these chicken places still crop up somehow how many dave's hot chickens do you need how many raising canes do you need you know chick-fil-a like I'm just like, Popeyes. it's making me want Popeyes. You know, church is chicken. I don't know if y'all have churches over there. We do. That was my mom's place. We would go to Back in the day, churches, honestly, pretty good. Churches was better than KFC. Huh? Do you know Ricky Smiley? No? Yeah. <gasps> oh, my God. We are, like, 
so best friends. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. I never know someone of Ricky Smiley. Yeah, there was a skit he did and he was like, church is chicken or like calling church is chicken and asking. Him. It was this whole thing and we loved it growing up. It was funny. <laughs> He's funny. I haven't seen him in anything in a while. He used to have a show um, on like our local Channel 11, like oh. our Fox. Um, it was like a like later or early afternoon like day talk uh kind of like tmz i guess because it came on after tmz so it was just kind of like you know uh, so yeah pop culture like stuff but he was funny i miss him mm -hmm. he's freaking hilarious no, I'll have to see what, what, he's up to. what he's been up to yeah let's see but yes it has been an hour that Blue mm by -hmm. he's um, he's not dead so I guess he's just <laughs> not into it or something you know just taking a, a step back from the limelight or whatever well that's good glad he's still with us because he's not that old right he's probably 54. like in his 60s 54 54 okay yeah okay nice cool good for him still alive and kicking mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but like you're saying, the hour technically is up. So, is there anything else you wanted to mention from your notes that we didn't get a chance to talk about? I think that's about it. Um, let me double check. I'm really happy we continued this conversation because this is really big. How like food is the first thing to impact your nervous system. Mm -hmm. All the techniques you want to do, like you can do everything, but if your food, if your diet is absolute trash, you're not getting enough water. If you're not getting enough electrolytes, you enough, yeah. You know, like the basic, the rule. Honestly, this is all the parasympathetic too, right? Because that's the rest mm -hmm. of the So yeah, yeah. I guess it really starts with the parasympathetic nervous system and how you know regulated that is, and then that could obviously spark the sympathetic to be in overdrive. But I feel the sympathetic is more geared towards external circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, exactly internal and the parasympathetic seems to be more regulated by the internal stuff mm -hmm. exactly and then if like the internal stuff is out of whack then the it kicks stuff. in your yeah it kicks in the sympathetic and then like you're just angry mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. yeah, yeah if you in but, excessively toxic environment that's no no good to you and your system mm -hmm. yeah. exactly um but yeah, from what I can tell, it looks like we pretty much covered everything that I had on my notes and even some more stuff, you know, about like food and like diet and um, just like overall like wellness and like what you do day to day and like things that can attribute to, you know, things kind of like getting a little haywire. But yeah. All right, awesome. This has been such a great episode. I would say mm -hmm. all of them are favorite, but I really liked how we talked about this stuff today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very cohesive. We were very cohesive. So yes. I want to thank everyone for tuning into our podcast today. If there's nothing left for you to say, mm -hmm. I think I've talked enough. <laughs> Your undefined throat and my undefined throat self. <laughs> All right, so my name is Gina. And I'm Anna. And this has been our podcast, The Spiritual Hour. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. And you will see us back again next week. But we will be on Sunday. Is um, Not this week. Okay. Not just yet. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But eventually we will be, I guess we should <laughs> tell people. <laughs> eventually we will be... Uh, Having our podcast on Sunday mornings, probably like, I don't know what time, but like early morning, probably. Like definitely before like 10. Okay, so that will be like one my time. Yeah. That's what we used to do on Saturdays. Like, Yeah, I was thinking, I'm like, she was up at 12 o'clock because it was 12 o'clock. Well, it was 12 my time, so 9 mm -hmm. Wow, she was up yeah. really early. And I didn't like process it because I'm like, oh, it's 12 o'clock my time. So that's, for me, I'm like up at like six thirty, generally. So. Yeah, no, I get up at seven. So like, honestly, it's perfect for me. Okay. You know, shower, get ready, eat a little quick something, and then I'm like, 
just go right into it. Yeah, so I'm like, excited I'm to do it in the morning again. Yeah, and I'm like, I like having it like to every where everything kind of like runs together, and so you can have like the extra time. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like let things go wrong in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and we maybe our internet connection will be more stable than. Two. Yeah. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> but we will let you guys go. We want to thank you again so much for tuning into our podcast, and we will see you again soon. Yes. Bye.